This week in lab, once again, we're going to be looking at stoichiometry. In the past few weeks, we've looked at the reaction of aluminum with hydrochloric acid. We've looked at the reaction of barium hydroxide with sulfuric acid. This week, we're going to look at the reaction of bleach or hypochlorite with thiosulfate ions. So, what makes this experiment different? In the first two experiments that we did looking at stoichiometry, we were very careful in the way we set the experiment up to keep one of our reagents constant and to vary the other reagent. So we only had one variable to work with. That's usually a really good practice when we're doing science, but what if we don't want to do it that way? This experiment this week is going to let us explore a little bit different technique that makes it seem like we're varying two things at once, but we really aren't. So what about continuous variation? Well, rather than look at the reaction that you're going to do right away, because it's really not that exciting to watch, let's look at a different reaction. So I have a couple of samples here. This is a solution of iron three ions. This is a solution of sulfosalicylic acid. Let's call that SSA for short. Now, they don't look that exciting all by themselves, but what happens if we combine them? If I take a beaker and let me set that on some white paper to make it a little easier to see. I have a solution of sulfosalicylic acid. That's a colorless solution. I've got a yellow solution containing iron 3 plus ions. And if I mix them together, that gives me a really intense color. It's even hard to see what color that is. It's actually sort of a reddish purple color. It's very intense and it's actually hard to even see through. So, what's the product of this reaction? This is iron 3 plus and SSA. So, I can write out the beginning of this reaction. Aqueous iron 3 plus and aqueous SSA. But what do these make? Well, that's a little hard to predict because at this point we don't even know what SSA is. We don't know if SSA has a charge. We don't know how much charge it has, but we do know something very important. We know that if we combine iron 3 and sulfosalicylic acid, we get color. And that's the root of continuous variation experiments. We need some observable quantity. In this case, we can observe the color. The other important thing is to systematically vary our two reagents. So if we take a look at a set of reagents, a set of experiments that I did earlier, We can maybe see what's going on a little bit easier in that experiment. So you can see that as we start over here with a very small amount of SSA, we don't get much color. But as we increase the amount of SSA, the relative amount of SSA, across this series of samples, the color gets darker until we get to a certain point, at which point the color starts to fade again as now the amount of iron that's present gets to be too small to react fully and form the desired colored product. Now this looks like I've got two variables and in a sense I do, but what if I combine those two variables? Because when we're looking at 
a chemical reaction, when we're looking at a balanced chemical equation, what we're really looking at is a ratio of moles. So instead of taking a ratio as we've done for some of our other experiments, why don't we take a fraction? And let's figure out something called a mole fraction. So when I mixed up this first sample, I used 43.7 milliliters of 0.116 molar iron 3 plus solution and I used 6.3 milliliters of 0.103 molar SSA solution. That means that I used 5.07 times 10 to the minus third moles of iron and 6.5 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of SSA. If we want to use mole fraction, we need to combine these two terms together. So our total moles, if you just add those together, are total moles 5.72 times 10 to the minus 3 total moles. Figuring out mole fraction of each, I've got 5.07 times 10 to the minus third moles of iron over 5.72 times 10 to the minus third total moles. For a mole fraction, mole fraction is usually given the symbol chi of iron of 0.89. Doing the same thing over here, I've got 6.5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of SSA over 5.72 times 10 to the minus 3 total moles. So I SSA must be 0.11. Mole fraction gives you a nice self-check here because if these are the only two components, then this plus that must add up to one. 